Okay, before I get started on the replacement of a conventional type burner, these burners were, oh, we stopped making them in the late 60s, with the flame retention head burner, I thought I'd make a comparison. Now we have two burners here. The one on the left is the old conventional burner. The one on the right is the flame retention burner. Now the differences are fairly obvious. If you look at the uh, conventional burner on the left, you can see the flame does not come quite back to uh, the head. There's some distance there. And if you look over at the flame retention head burner, it's holding the flame on the burner head. It's much closer there. Let me give you another shot of this. Now here's a close-up of the flame retention head burner. You can see the flame is coming right off of that head. It's, it's kind of sucked right up close to it. Now let's take a look at the conventional burner. Now you can see it goes out quite a ways before the uh, flame even starts. And it's also a wider flame. You can see how wide that thing is. We used to call that the sunflower burner because it would kind of spread out like a flower. The problem with this burner is it gets too much air into the uh, uh, flow up there. and Actually, the flame is quite a bit cooler than the flame retention head burner. You need more of that flame concentrated together like the flame retention head does. The one thing I can't show you accurately is the more volume of heat that's coming out of that flame retention burner. I can feel the heat far higher on the right side than I can on the left side. And in this situation, the nozzle size of the flame retention head burner is 0.50, and the nozzle size in the non-retention head is actually 0.65. So on the left, you should have a larger flame because there's more oil being used. But because of the excess air, not being mixed properly, it really doesn't put out as much heat. Now neither one of these burners are really good. This is not a really good flame. You can see sparkles in, uh, in the flames uh, from both of these things. But that's because it's not in a combustion chamber. They should be inside a combustion chamber to reflect heat back into the flame to evaporate all the liquid oil so it can be burned. But you can see how, uh, how much better the flame retention burner uh, performs in this test. Here again in the close-up you can see uh, the way that flame is coming out kind of like a sunflower. The whiter it is, actually the cooler it is. And on the retention head that flame is almost right up on the nozzle and it's more concentrated. This is despite the fact that I have the, uh, the air shutters almost completely shut off on the uh, conventional burners and uh, the flame retention head burner has them quite wide open. I'll give you some pictures of that. Now here's the uh, conventional burner Right in the center there, you can see that slide is just barely open. It's just the tiniest little bit of air being allowed into this thing. And yet it's still got too much air uh, to make a, a good burn. Remember, oil furnaces need just enough air to clean up the flame. Any more than that's going to cool down the flame and reduce its efficiency. Now let's take a look at the uh, flame retention head uh, burner. Now if you look at these air shutters, you can see they're quite a bit farther open than on the conventional burner. 
Um, with the flame retention burners, they were designed to have much better control of how much air got into uh, the flame and where it was actually positioned. We're going to take a look at the burner heads of these two uh, burners too that uh, kind of gives you a little better idea of, uh, of the control of the air. Now here you're looking at the head of the conventional burner. That's a piece of cast iron there and you can get the kind of hint of some kind of swirly things that are cast into it. That's supposed to make the air sort of swirl around. It really was not very effective and in fact a lot of them kind of burned up and fell apart after a while. But you can see the size of that hole. Here's another look a little bit closer on that. The, the electrodes are right above that uh, the nozzle in there. But you can see the air is going to be moving through there a pretty large volume of it. Now here we're comparing that to the flame retention head. And you can see how much smaller that is. And it actually has those slots in it. That's there to swirl the air into the flame. And here's a little closer look at it. That burner head is what makes the big difference between the flame retention burner and the rest of these uh, old conventional burners. I actually, for a while, I was taking flame retention heads and retrofitting them onto some of the old conventional burners. And amazingly, it did pretty good. Not quite as good as the... Uh, as a flame retention burner assembly, but it actually didn't do half bad. Well, hopefully you can see why we changed over to these, to these new flame retention head burners. I say new, 50 years ago we changed over to them. Uh, what I'm going to do next is the combustion chamber in many of these old furnaces is not viable anymore with the flame retention burner because the flame is so much hotter. These things really make a lot of difference in the amount of temperatures in there, especially if you have something like a stainless steel combustion chamber. And in order to make it more efficient, we're going to want to put a uh, either a wet pack in it or a form combustion chamber. They will heat much quicker than the old fire brick. Fire brick could take up to five minutes to uh, heat up and get the efficiency up, where the uh, new combustion chambers only take about 20 or 30 seconds because you need that heat reflected back. Okay, that's it on this one.